Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by CoolStuffInc.com, CardHoarder.com, Alter Sleeves, as well as Twitch subscribers and Patreon supporters just like you. I am Ruben Bressler, and we get started as we do most weeks by saying hello to me, but also my two co-hosts, MTG Nerd Girl. Hey, guys, welcome back. And Evan Irwin. Hi. Hello, hey. everyone. Hey. Hey, I'm the Internet Seven R One, and we're doing the whole show. We appreciate Amazing. that. Thank you, if Ruben. You missed, if you missed our pre-show, mm. subscribers to this channel get access to our Not Safe for Work version early. And this week, you got access to it also. And with that, we kick it off with our first pick and our giveaway. Get your chance at $50 worth of anything at CoolStuffInc.com by typing exclamation mark raffle in the chat, but... Subscribe first to get two chances to win and support your favorite streamer with your suggestions at the end of the show to see who we raid tonight. That is thanks to our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day. Wow. All right. Like a like a professional. Like a champion. Well done. Incredible. Thanks. Incredible. Well, our first pick this week, officially, uh, one more time for the Gipper, uh, is the Magic 30 Roundup. The Magic 30 details, this is the weekend of Halloween, showing up in Vegas. Um, lots of people have gnashed teeth over how expensive it is to go and how, you know, there's uh, the, the flights are expensive and the hotels are expensive and so on. And yet it's selling out and a bunch of the VIP packages have sold out. But first up, let's take a look at what they're actually going to be doing at the show. Um you know, I'm not even going to get into the health and safety stuff, but for what it's worth, they are looking like they're requiring vaccination and, and masks. So high five. Everything else around that, not getting into it. Um, ticket packages happen. They start essentially at 60 bucks for adults, 20 bucks for kids. Uh, the promo cards include a foil etched arcane signet. I swear it's not the Infinity Gauntlet. I mean, it, looks, it is cool, but it, though. But it's cool. It does look dope. Does That's look very cool. Super dope. Uh, there is a a special Richard Garfield PhD originally from Unglued back in action with a thirty year stamp. I love that. What a good choice. Nice and a good old fashioned soul ring, which is nice. Um, but yeah, so they've got different various packages, weekend packages, and things. VIP packages, uh, which are also cool. Uh, there's a whole, and we're talking the, the biggest one is seven hundred dollars. And by the way, again, these sold out, so they gone. Uh, that had a variety of things, mystery boosters, collector boosters, draft boosters of various sets, um, and stuff like play mats and deck boxes and sleeves and backpacks and all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, uh, Nurgle, you did make your way into this one, but you just squeezed right in, right? Well, I didn't. Somebody else did. I actually started trying to buy the, my ideal was the Pearl, uh, which was the $350 player, uh, like competitive player one, mm -hmm. not the $350 EDH one, which there is a, a distinction there. But I was like, if those are sold out for some weird reason, I'll get the VIP one. I was kind of thinking that maybe those would not sell out quite as fast just because they were so expensive. But 20 minutes in, the VIP was sold out, the, the expensive $700 one. The Pearl one was not. By the time I checked out or tried to, it was gone. And it, it rejected me and kicked me out of the site. Um, mm. So I was unable to get it. But thankfully, I did have uh, a friend who purchased an extra one that allowed me to purchase it from them. So yay. But yeah, it was uh, it's tough. Like You guys can't get anything. And then an hour after that, the Ruby one was sold out. Yeah, I got lucky, I guess. I was like, oh, it's time to buy a ticket. And then I logged in and bought my ticket. Like, I just classic Ruben, nothing bad ever happens to me. <laughs> uh, because also the other thing I realized was apparently the only um, two that could get the playmat and the backpack were the Pearl and the Lotus. Hmm. And I, being Mox Ruby, bought the Mox Ruby Cause I'm a sucker. Cause I'm a mark. Cause you're on brand. And it's like, like that's on. my name. I'm going to choose that one. Also, that was the commander one. And I'm like, there's no grand prix. I'm just going to go play commander. Sure. So I didn't even really register why those two were like, so clamored after, but those two were gone immediately. Lickety like by the split. time I logged in, it wasn't even an option. Um, so I guess I got a little bit lucky that I just sort of happened into it, but. Well, Honestly, I think that the command area is going to be pretty high value. So you get that all weekend versus the Pearl one, which I get the uh, undraft with Rosewater. 
which mm-hmm. I think is going to be pretty sweet. Um, be but pretty you rad. can also, they have another one of those on the Saturday that you can buy your way into, which I think they still had tickets for the last time I checked. So you guys could check that. But I think the command zone, the only way you have access to it is if you purchase the $300 and $350 ticket. There is no yeah. command area. Yeah. So those are already sold out. So you're one of a very exclusive few that are going to get to be able to play in that command area. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, the Lotus and Ruby packages are the only two that have the command area. And then the Pearl and Lotus packages were the two that had the backpack and the playmat. Now, um, and I wasn't going to spend $750. Like, that's, that's I mean, I'm a sucker. Money. I'm not that much of a, I, I just don't have that much extra money. That That's a, a heck of a bunch of cheddar. Now, I think there's two lessons that we can learn here. One has not yet been fully learned and one we're still learning. Uh the VIP packages have yet to find a ceiling. They sold out a $700 package. They did. It's not like they had one available. They had yeah. some number available and they're gone. Like I sold a, a $200 VIP experience at Command Fest Orlando. And I was like, I wonder if it's going to work. And like I later talked to a lot of people who were there, did some surveys from the people who showed up. And from all data points, I am telling you. The VIP packages can be bigger and better and more expensive and more exclusive and with more cool experiences because people are willing to pay for them. People Mm -hmm. have been shut up, you know, shut in for years and they're just dying to do something cool. A lot of the people in the magic space or the nerd space have lots of extra, you know, minute money they'd be happy to spend on a really cool, unique experience. And I think that's what we found here. Still 700 bucks gone like that. Just I mean, instantly. the value is here, though. Like, I'm, as it should I'm doing, be. You want to some napkin math, and right. it looks like this is worth that. I'm not saying that you know, that it's not sort of worth it. What I'm saying is, you can make packages that are worth a thousand plus dollars, and I think they would absolutely sell. I 100% believe it. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. The thing that they have not learned yet, and I'm telling you, I feel like we did a pretty good job of this for Command Fest Orlando. So please, organizers of the world, if you are listening. If you're going to make a special, unique party slash event thing for the VIP people or people want to pay into this for this one, it's a crimson anniversary party for 40 bucks or whatever. For the love of God, have them play magic. Have magic players who pay to go to certain spots with VIPs play magic. They don't want to mingle. Like, that's not what magic players do. Magic players don't want to just, like, randomly have to come up to people. How many times, right. how many stories do we have to hear about the VIPs just spoke to themselves? They had their little circle over there in the corner. Everybody was too intimidated to say anything to them. I'm telling you, this has happened three or four times. This is not the first rodeo. Give but these that's people- different. I understand, but like in terms of like what they want to do, in terms of like you know making a nightclub or something a party experience, let them play magic. Let them play magic. I'm telling you, can't, you, you can't play magic at the at a VIP section. And also, I think then the thing that you're kind else. of, but what you're ex- describing is a situation where you paid for the VIP and there is a VIP event for you to go into that is not exactly what you paid for. Like you bought a VIP badge so you can go into the uh, special area, go into the special magic events, and there also is this party there that is. you're not really a party person. This mm-hmm. is a completely separate ticket for something yeah. for well, mingling. I Only people buying that. this are interested in mingling. Yeah. Like if you want to go play magic, you could just stay in the hall. There's a seven o'clock event that's going to run way past this t- the, t- the start time for this. And so it's a lot different. The well, value it, on the $40 event seems there. I don't know. I mean, it's not an open bar situation, so it's not that crazy. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't really know any details about the party either. All I know is I'm already in Vegas, so I'm just not going to go to that party. Yeah, and you don't have to go to any parties or whatever. What I'm saying is that, you know, these type of experiences, in my opinion, you know, some dude on the Internet is that these these would go far go go over far better because again this is setting up situations that we have seen time yeah. and time again have brought negative experiences to people who go to them I, I, that's just what i see every time i think that you're conflating because this is intended to be a party this is intended to be a party not intended to be a magic event isn't it right? it's the during crimson, magic 30 the crimson thing is is a party that happens at a magic event it's not a magic event happening at a magic event i feel it's like it's also this not is... associated with the vip badge like that, it's right. not 
it's not this is the thing you buy the VIP badge yes, for. This I is get, an additional ticket. I understand that I kind of presented it poorly, but what I'm trying to say is if you're trying to hold a special like special party event thing, having them give them something to do. Like I just, all right. That's all that's all I wanted to say. Whatever, it's fine. Well, as long as you acknowledge you presented it poorly. I presented it poorly. That's <laughs> things that happened in my life. All right. Okay. So things I can complain about, because boy, I love doing that. Um, so we have here uh, a special secret layer that you can only purchase uh, as part of the, uh, the there's like a there, there's an event kind of thing at home you can kind of do or whatever um, and it's a little little geary uh, the secret layer for mm -hmm. this one let me pull it up on the screen here um, so yeah this is the it's only in foil. And you can get it either through packages for the event, um, or again, you can buy it um, as part of the festival in a box uh, while supplies last and things. You can buy it at the event too, right? I believe so. Um, and we'll talk about this virtual ticket thing here in a second. Um, yeah. But what my, my point was, this is the 30th anniversary, okay? This is 30 years of magic, of history, of play, of classic, just from the old school, from the Silver Age to the Golden Age to the Modern Age, what have you. And on your 30th anniversary event, you had the rice ball be the character on these random cards that randomly are random. It's pretty random. La um, Last Chance is a $50, will soon be less, portal card right. because that's where they wanted to put some money in it. Vandal Blast, Curiosity, Greed, and Peak are worth $0, maybe a dime or two. And so, and yes, there'll be a few dollars because they're secret layer. I get it. But, you know, again, at the end of the day, I'm like, what in the hell does this have to do with 30th anniversary anything? I just, I just don't get it. Yeah. I think it's an odd choice to have this be this secret lair. Um, but with that said, I'm also kind of fine with it. Like if this had come out as its own secret lair in its current form, I don't think that it would move the needle at all. Mm -mm. I love this little character. I think Lil Geary is great. I think that this is a really cute and the story of the flavor texts is very adorable. That's true. Um, it's very cute. No, don't, it has don't nothing wrong. to the do. is there. Yeah, yeah. It has nothing to do with the 30th anniversary. <laughs> I just, that I have nothing wrong with this secret lair. Sure. It's just this is the this is a weird place to put it. I agree. I, I think my idea is that they don't necessarily. I, I feel like if they do something that's too fancy and has too many good cards and tie it to this exclusive event where they're selling it on location. So maybe the quantity is less mm -hmm. because they don't want to like ship or bring things. Right. So maybe, maybe it is just a smaller thing. So maybe that would drive the price up too high, but also why waste your excitement points on a, on a thing that will sell because it's the event headliner. Sure. Because I like excitement points, and I like big excitement points well, in my exciting stuff. And it also <clears> could <throat> be yeah. something along the lines of, we didn't think this far ahead, right? The Secret Lair team is not talking to the live events team, mm -hmm. particularly uh, during the COVID uh, situation. So they went, all right, what are we doing? What is the, ex we have to give away something exclusive. We'd like to do a secret lair that's exclusive. What do we have? Well, right. we have Lil Geary and they're like, Lil mm. Geary's secret lair doesn't have a ton of value in it. If we staple it to the magic 30, great. If they had planned ahead, if it had been all one entity, always talking to each other, sure. We probably would have gotten you know, uh, descendants path or like something that's like speaks to the history of the game, but they didn't. So I'm, this is a, this is a small issue that we're yes. talking about because there's very little news this week. There's I not, think that, yeah, it's a slow news week. Okay. It's not I think Lil, the worst thing I, in the I world. I think Lil Geary is great. And Lil I want to see fine. Lil Geary return. And Lil Geary's return is hinted at in the flavor text of that last chance. So didn't, I'm looking forward. Didn't one of the Kamigawa alters or promos have like a little food character very similar where the character was running around on rooftops? Am I am I going crazy? Didn't we have something very similar? I don't remember quite honestly, but again, Ooh, running around on this, rooftops. I don't recall. Your that explanation sounds like like literally every explanation we've generally gotten from wizards is that 
you know, right hand wasn't talking to the left hand. When they finally did, they scrambled. Sure, man. And whatever. And maybe it's not. I don't know. I just think it's really weird. 30 years out, we choose the, the rice ball. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, <laughs> is it just me? Or is this shield a little too big? Like, actually that, too large. That's, like That's a tower shield. No, 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 no. Okay. That's a tower shield. Is that, that's yeah, not real shields. things? Or yeah, just yeah, yeah. like Tower almost shields. comically large, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the the point of them is to place them down. Okay. So that you can so then you go like, sort of thunk carry them. into the dirt and then go behind it. Okay. So I'm okay with this. No, I'm, I think it's cool. Mm-hmm. I was just one of the things like, man, that's it like is a giant enormous. <laughs> it's giant. I didn't shield. notice the child there before. Yeah. Yeah. I prefer to think of this as a razor scooter, and we just don't see the bottom. Hmm. That's what I think is happening here. Nice. Is we're, is we're, <laughs> She's just driving along. Is that we're driving along our bird scooter. Yeah. That's okay. what I hope is happening. So, so the- Maverick Girl just saved me. The The little Onigiri character is from the Forgotten Realms. There was a couple of promos where he's running around on the rooftops and doing some cool stuff. Yeah. So I'm wondering if because this is the current arena set... For the D&D Forgotten Realms, maybe that's one of the reasons they decided to revisit this character. Yeah, this was from the Love Your LGS 2021 uh, promos exclusively in Japanese uh, for Orb of Dragonkind. Yeah, yep. Orb of Dragonkind. So that's pretty neat. I... And they're probably a million dollars if you want to get them. But... I love this character. Or we never know. He's very cute. Very, very And very delicious. Cute. Yes. I bet. But the, you know, the unique deck box uh, and the play mats and whatnot are super duper rad. And I love pins. So there's a pin. Always got to be a pin. Um, and the super cool backpack, which has like all the different words that talk about the different colors around the outside mm-hmm. of the Pentagon, which is really neat. Yeah. My big regret of not getting Pearl or Lotus is the backpack. I really would like the backpack. That would be a uh, very rad. I will maybe hook you up with mine because I think that backpack's ugly. Really? It's kind of ugly. Okay. <laughs> like this right here is kind of the little. Like when I was counting up the value of it and I was like, eh, $20, whatever. Don't care about this backpack. I think right. I think the word I would use is a little, it's a little gaudy. Um, it's not, it doesn't really mesh well with its material. It doesn't, you know. Sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's definitely. It's just kind of like. It's slap. definitely not <laughs> spectacular, but. It's a but, weird shape. It's yeah. weird, but it does got the magic logo on it, and that's going to be but rad no matter magic what. On it. That's all I care about. That's super rad. Now, here's something they're doing that's also super rad. I've never seen this before. I think it's absolutely incredible. Whoever come up with this idea, high five, get them a steak dinner. The New Perspectives Grant Program. Uh, yeah. This allows them to select 10 applicants uh, to support the inclusion of magic enthusiasts who belong to historically underrepresented groups by providing assistance to attend. They get the Black Lotus VIP package, a three-day badge, a $2,000 stipend for travel accommodations and expenses, which is amazing. So get them applications in. They gotta be, they'll got to be accepted through, well, uh, yeah, through, thank God, the window's still open, uh, through August 17th, uh, 2022. Uh, so you got six more days here. Applicants will be selected on quality and originality. Uh, so get in on that if you, you know, if you can, or if you know someone who's who's in yeah. this, you know, Point scenario. In direction. Let's do it. This was this I, is awesome. I agree. Uh, I was a little surprised. There was some some bad feelings on social media about it, about how getting people of underrepresented groups to compete against each other, as opposed to like offering some like general support at like maybe um, like you know discounted tickets or something mm-hmm. like that for mm-hmm. you know to actually bring in more people because like bringing 10 people in isn't like great i guess yeah. to the general pop- population i like i agree with you evan i think that like this is sort of scholarship-esque and i, I yeah. love that they are decided to do this but yeah i was really surprised there was a lot of kind of like hurt feelings in the community well, that's really that seems really odd because you know this to me is this is a uh, a twenty seven thousand dollar expenditure here seven hundred and fifty dollar yeah. you know ten of those and yeah. ten two k you know stipends that stuff adds up quick so that's you know money yeah. where your mouth is type stuff. I think this yeah. is a no good deed goes unpunished situation where Agreed. you're you they were gonna have to take their lumps of uh, taking you know. I don't like how this hundred dollar bill is folded situation. Like I, I understand that we've been there. Y- yeah, I I agree that there is some competition to be had here, but also mm-hmm. it's magic. 
Yeah. And, you know, there's, uh, of course, other cool things to be doing. You know, the Brothers War preview, that stuff's going to be going on at the time. And Rosewater's going to have a panel, which should be super neat. Um, there's the party I ranted about already. And the Magic 30 Championship is also going to be there. That's going to be absolutely ridiculous, culminating in a beta Rochester draft. Yeah, that's wild. And for it to be this far down in the description is wild, but... Yeah, the championship top eight, the first place gets a beta booster, second through fourth gets an Arabian Nights booster, and fifth through eight gets an Antiquities and an English Legends booster. That's amazing. Like, I love this. Wizards can flex so hard with the older, you know, packs of stuff because they have older packs of stuff. And they can use them for events just like this one. I thought yeah, that was brilliant. I think this is really great. The the list of events, even the ones that are like side events that you guys can still sign up for, is actually really cool. They have throwback drafts all throughout. Like once you buy your ticket, you can actually log in and it'll, you know, give you a breakdown of every single hour of every day and what events there are. Throwback Zendikar, throwback Innistrad, like everything you could possibly want, really. Mm -hmm. um, and th they range between 20 and $200 for a draft or whatever, depending on the set. But yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah, I mean, all the way back to Scars of Mirrodin block and Battle for Zendikar block is, you know, pretty fantastic to uh, to have fun with. Um, so there's going to be the last bit here is the virtual ticket package. If you wanted to spend 30 bucks, you get an arena avatar, you get an arena entry token, an online event entry token, virtual Q&A with Rosewater and Garfield, and access to merchandise exclusive to Magic 30. Uh, so that's an option if you're at home and you weren't able to go and you want to go or want to be a part of it in some way. Uh, so again, that said, the thing sold out so quickly. All the VIP yeah. stuff was gone. So congrats on the success there. Um, I think that the event itself is going to be fine. Mm -hmm. I'm upset at the just dearth, honestly, of guests. There's a fraction of what I would expect from a magic event and for it to be a 30th anniversary event as marketed and for the guest list to be so small of like seven artists and like five guests or whatever is shocking. Um, I also am not surprised that everything sold out because what, like it's the, it's the only game in town. Like, you know, when, when you have something like this, it could, it could have been the you know the ball pit meme and people would still go to it. Um, <laughs> could be Dash Kong. It's not right. nearly that bad, right? right? There's still it's lots not. of cool things happening. Obviously, there are missteps here, right? Obviously, it seems like none of the hands were talking to what the other hands were doing. And so we kind of have a little bit of a slapdash event. Um, GP Vegas the first, this is not, right? Does not seem like it's... A, the must be must go to event of the all time. Right. Um, but it's going to be good. Like this is going to be a solid B minus event. Um, and I'm willing to be surprised. I, I am honestly surprised, uh, selfishly so that the content creators and artists and things are not more prominently featured just mm -hmm. because this is a 30th anniversary. I would think we want, would want to celebrate the community and all of those things. And if I was, not a content creator, not an artist or anything, that would be one of my major things I would want to do. Like, this is the biggest event Magic is going to host. I want to go see and meet these people. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that a lot of the content creators can't even get tickets is kind of insane. Yeah. Um, and again, that's, you know, maybe selfish and maybe people don't actually care and they just want to throw back draft, then that's great. But it is weird to me that that is not the focus of, of the event. Like, and I, I understand that there is a lot of effort when you try to herd a lot of cats, uh, trust me, I know. Um, but, you know, and, and you know, if you want to look at it from the, the straight capitalism side of it, you know, they didn't have to spend the money to bring those people out there and the event is still selling out. Sure. So. Yeah. Again, yep. they, they can fall forward as much as they or fail forward as much as they want. Yep. The sure. fact remains that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to say, you know, Richard Garfield should be there. Obviously, if Richard Garfield wasn't there. What are we doing here? Right. Rosewater uh, needs to be there. Maybe Peter Atkinson should get an invite. You know what I mean? Like, sure. I, I know that's not a name we talk about anymore, but he's huge in the creation and success of Magic the Gathering. Bring back some of these old designers, old artists. 
of course I'm going to want content creators to be there, but you know, I don't need content creators to be there. If you bring back some yeah. original designers, some old pros, maybe, you know what I mean? Like yep. people that helped grow your game from years zero to five. Yeah. I mean, you know, there, there's a, I, I can imagine the, there's just so many ways that you can kind of spin it. For example, like the first pro tour winner or something, mm -hmm. you know, the, the variety of, you know, where's Johnny magic. You know, did they even ask him Did they talk to Kai Bude? I have no idea. Um, it doesn't seem like they talked to a whole lot of people, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get outside of my scope of inviting content creators and pros, because if I wanted to invite content creators and pros, I could give you a list of 200 names. Yeah, of course. But artists and designers are also on the list. Yeah. Like, I would love to see all sorts of Watsy Brass. I'm sure there still will be lots and lots of Watsy Brass there, um, but named and featured and you know on panels yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So let's move on. Let's move on here to gather the townsfolk. Thanks to our sponsor, CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. Now, Wizards has a big deal next Thursday. Next Thursday, our show is going to be packed to the gills with information that they are going to share with us uh, next Thursday. Uh, and what is it? It's 9 a.m. Is that correct? Peace, uh, Pacific time? Yes, 9 a.m. Pacific time, so noon uh, Eastern Standard, and they're going to not only announce all the wizard stuff for Magic, but all the wizard stuff for D&D &D that they plan on announcing, well, this Yay. far out. So that sounds great. Yeah. Um, um, the hosts announced, uh, everyone in this chat will be familiar with Jimmy. Uh, hmm. Jimmy Wong is one of the game knights. He's been an indelible part of the Magic community since he joined it. Um, those of the other two hosts are going to be less familiar to magic people. Ginny D is the one that I'm most familiar with being a D Dungeons and Dragons content creator. Mm. She is an extremely popular uh, YouTube creator, Patreon, uh, and also cosplay person. But in the D&D &D sphere, uh, she's just an, an incredible resource for new players in particular. Hmm. Um, making content to help specifically people who've like not really played D&D &D before, which is just a very unique space to be in. Hmm. Uh, and also she's a delight and just a nice person. Uh, Sydney Goodman, I don't know who this is. Apparently she was a host for IGN for quite a while. Hmm. Um, you know, is a TikTok and YouTube creator. Uh and her resume is insane. Like, I have no doubts that she's going to do a great job. I'm just unfamiliar with her. Hmm. Fair enough. <clears throat> so that is going to be super cool. We'll get to talk all about 2023 and what they're doing next year. Like the final two Dominaria sets we'll get to learn the names of, I can imagine, which will be super rad. Um, I can't wait for that stuff. So around this time last year, it was very exciting and very fun. And I look forward to running it right back. Um, <clears throat> so apparently Sydney, I want to toss this out because we're a podcast. So here's another podcast for you. Sure. Uh, Sydney Goodman co-hosts a podcast with someone named Kate Franklin called shut up, keep going, which is a great name for a podcast. Nice. Yeah. Um, so the arena announcements, not only did they come with the gladiator format, which was, it's kind of neat. It's basically like Canadian uh, threshold or something or, or Canadian Highlander, Highlander? not threshold. Highlander. That's well, a blaze effect. kind of, kind of. So this is, of. but there's no commander. There's no commander and it's a best of three, which is also yeah. really kind of odd, but thanks to the magic of a digital client, you can reshuffle and get to play the next game just like that. Um, which is great. I've played it. It's been super fun. The client was kind of weird today, but uh, eventually started working right. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it a lot. Cool. Um, Challenge the Void Band and Historic Brawl. I mean, not shocked, not shocked, no pithy needles and no chalices so that you can't stop their commander from ever being played. Now, here's the thing, nerd girl here. Here's where we shine. All right. They rebalanced the limited format. What do you think mm -hmm. about that? So they attempted to, but they rolled it back, right? They they. Did they? Had some bugs and it didn't go through. Oh. Um, and then I didn't catch up on it, but I saw a video from Amazonian today, um, like shortly before the show, that said canceled. So I don't know if that is true. I haven't had a chance to check it out. I know it's not in effect right now. Mm. And I have seen things on social media to suggest that it is canceled. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Well, that whether that's true or not, <clears throat> I don't know. 
I, and that's fair. And so let's just note, you know, let's live in the fantasy land and let's say okay. it did come out today like it was supposed to. Uh, it is very well known by all the trackers that track the tracks that blue was completely terrible in this draft format of Baldur's Gate, you know, historic alchemy horizons, whatever they call it. Um, and so they buffed a bunch of blue cards. They literally redesigned one of the blue cards because of it's lacking basically. So hmm. I'm fine with this. If it is only for alchemy sets, which most people who don't like alchemy and hate alchemy and, you know, think it's terrible, whatever, they have completely stayed away from this draft format regardless, just right. because out of simple boycott, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you play an alchemy format, you are accepting that you're getting alchemy cards. You, you know, you, these things are created with digital first in mind. So you're making tweaks to these as is. That makes sense. Now, if you start going and doing these alters to regular formats, preventing me from practicing for my Grand Prix and my Opens and my whatever events, then I think we have a problem. I would like the main sets to stay as is, personally. And that, that all makes sense for what it's worth. Um, you know, I guess my question would be, you know, let's just throw out, let's say, and, and you know, the, the Brothers War or whatever, Black is just completely unplayable. Like, it's just really, really bad. You know, would you like them to change it or do you, would you like to leave basically a format that is known to have problems? I would leave it because yeah. it like if you change it and I play a bunch of it on arena and then I go to an event, I have gotten no practice in. And I think that that is to me personally more important. Now, there's a lot of people who are maybe arena only that would have different feelings on this. Mm -hmm. But if if it is not an alchemy set, it is not arena only a paper arena first. It is hand in hand with paper and if they don't match up then i have a problem that's yeah. fair and you know the only thing i got at this point is a we'll be doing the dominaria united uh, early access so that'll be oh, fun is that confirmed that's confirmed it's coming hey. back august 30th should be super duper fun cool so in just a few weeks we'll be doing that um and Put that on my calendar yeah that's going to be super rad i'm excited um, so yeah, the, uh, the arena updates were neat. Again, I, you know, I, I'm of two minds in many ways because I know that I championed them changing cards digitally for many years because I thought it was a you know, tool in the toolbox they never used. They finally started using it. You see the result of it, good, bad, and ugly. Why can I still not play with Oko in any format, wizards? You right. nerf the hell out of Teferi. Can I play with my Oko now? I can't. You can't play with Oko anywhere. You can't play with the Stork Brawl. Nothing. You have to do like anything goes direct not challenge. Gladiator? No. Oh. It's like, I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, and so, yeah, it's just really weird and frustrating. Um, but whatever, you know, just let me play with the Okos. Um, let's move on here to. It's, it's a valid point, but I mean, like, it's a card that it's not currently a problem. And I feel like Wizards has enough, like, it's like that little scene, like Avatar The Last Airbender, where, like, the, he's putting out the little fires and then the fires are spitting out and he's, like, trying to put them all out. Mm -hmm. So, like, that is not currently a fire. I feel like we have a lot of little fires. Well, it's so. not a problem because you can't play with it. <laughs> they haven't tried. They tried to rebalance it in that one little event and then nothing else. And you're like, but why? Just make it cost five. I don't care. I just want to have it as an option. It's really I weird. I want to talk about the psychology behind why you want to play with Oko so much. Because it's a cool card. Like, it's a cool magic card that literally is off limits. There's nowhere but everything goes direct challenge. Is it that just is because ridiculous. it's? Is it just because you can't play with it that you want to play with it? Yes. What will you do when you catch the bumper of the car you're chasing? I Evan? don't know. I'll build a deck. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll get really scared. <laughs> but either way, um, move on here to Desperate Ravings. Please check out our altar sleeves. Support the show by using the code Magic Mics at checkout for 5% off anything in the store, including a set of exclusive sleeves featuring the Magic Mics crew at altersleeves.com slash Magic Mics and the stickers. The stickers, the stickers. We talked about this quite a bit in the pre show uh, where people were complaining to Mark Rosewater about the stickers and being in Black Border Magic, specifically Legacy and or Commander, and the fact that you can't opt out of these things. And there was a video by the professor this week, which was super interesting, that talked about, you know, why would you take the silly jokey set and put it into a Black Border? And the, you know, the, the, the narrative of they finished the whole set and then went back and changed the ones that could be 
you know, technically legal in any magic set and made those legal for eternal play. Now, the, the, the disconnect seems to be uh, as to why they did that. And, you know, beyond, yes, it's nice to give players, you know, things to play with. Uh, I think another core point of it was that silver border sets sell terribly. Like yeah. they sell like crap. Like their singles are garbage. They might sell sealed because of the lands. And that was a lot of times what sustained a lot of those sets was just the land sales. And and the limited environment for the entertainment. Like it's like you're buying a movie ticket. It wasn't until Unstable that that actually happened. Yes, right? Agreed. Like the old formats were not The old good. two formats were bad. Play some unglued, you know, sealed. It's not great, you know? And the, the idea that, you know, there was no sort of thought as to secondary market value seems a little silly. Um, in that it, you know, that's not one of the factors because I think it was ac- absolutely a factor. Now, again, they're also mechanically could be in any set, great, but that doesn't mean there wasn't like, you know, silverboard cards don't sell for crap. Maybe we could make them not sell for literally pennies, no matter what, you know. And that was that's where we're at on the stickers, good, bad, or ugly. Where are you guys at on it? I mean. <sighs> Uh, the the whole uh, the stickers I think is a, a separate thing for making yeah. them black border so that I think they'll, they're making them black border so that they'll be played in constructed and like EDH and stuff mm-hmm. like that a lot of them are going to start being legal mm-hmm. which is a completely separate thing I think on I think the stickers themselves are great whether or not you should be bringing uncards into these other formats I can't speak on because I don't have a lot of insight into commander and what makes a healthy commander format mm-hmm. um, but stickers. M- feel unset to me. I would draft, yeah. if you had a blank card with a sticker on it that said first strike and then one of all the different things and you had creatures and they, you know, you could stick stickers all over different, like if each creature had a sticker whole, like blank and you could put whatever ability you drafted, this one sounds amazing. Like yeah. you have endless possibilities. I'm all for stickers and arm wrestling and confetti orbs and whatever nonsense you want to do. I'm happy to play with my hands off the table. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm here for it. Do you like squirrels? I great high five. My my favorite uh, my favorite bit from Unstable was Squirrel Link. Yeah, that, Squirrel that Link's was, very good. Squirrel Link's insane. I still have that promo somewhere. Do you? Um, yeah, I'm. So there's two conversations happening here, right? On the one hand, stickers. It's fair. I'm super medium on stickers until I see them in action. Mm. I am not nearly as sold that they will be good. Um. I want to see them in action before I pass judgment because I've been wrong before, particularly when it comes to unsets. Hmm. Um, as it pertains to old, like making them not silver bordered, I think that from a business perspective, making these cards legal in your most popular format is a no brainer. That's it. Um, that's fair. They I also think, put shocks in there. You know what I'm saying? They didn't just go no, with no, some no. cool lands. They went with even more cool lands yes, yes, on yes. top of your cool but lands. But e- we've had cool lands in unsets before. We want to sell more. We want right. to be more. We want, And right. we want to sell cards that players can play. And I think that you know you power them in such a way that they won't see play in the old formats if you have no way to say this card can be played in Commander, period. Now, right. I'm sure they didn't imagine it so, but hilariously, Saw in Half, which like basically kills a creature and you make two tokens of itself, is l- literally immediately broken with Dual Caster Mage. <laughs> oh, good. It literally infinites with oh, Dual Caster Mage immediately. I love that. Which is hilarious. So, like, you know, silly stuff like that. Again, you know, is it jokey stuff bleeding into Legacy or whatever? Do we care that much? You know what I mean? Like... It's a little silly. I wanted to talk about it. That was it. Uh, Real quick, before we move on from the silly, I just wanted to let you guys know, uh, at this last event that we went to, um, they did a convention booster draft. And my friend was like, I got this, like, uh, convention card, the, you know, the sketchy ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was, like, second to last pick, and I think it's kind of cute. And I was like, I think that's worth something, because it had, it was the original printing of the Pusheen. Oh, wow. And they got it like second to last. And it's like $150 now. Yeah, because you can't get it. Oh, yeah. The old Bushin. Copyright. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's weird that at the conventions, they're still using the original printing product. And the new boxes, which people are already in circulation and are already getting, is that Bushin card is different. It's a different doodle. Correct. Yeah, because so, of copyright. 
Yeah. Well, and so there are boxes still being opened at conventions from Wizards that have the Pusheen. And it's a second to last pick, $150 bill. Yes. And that this is also because, <laughs> you know, Wizards printed a bunch of that product and then the world ended. So, mm-hmm. like, my guess is they printed enough for, like, all the GPs of 2020 and then there was no 2020 and it was like, oh God. And they're probably still going through it. How the, the, uh, take the, uh, buy your own, you know, um, what do you call it? Festival in a box magic 30 thing, which also mm-hmm. sold out, uh, sure. gave you a full booster box of them. That's like $300 right there. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little insane. Wow. So, uh, anyway, moving on here. Uh, magic spell slingers. Did y'all know there's a new magic? You know, mobile app that lets you kind of play Hearthstone magic? Nope, sure didn't. Came out today, everybody. Okay. And you can have a very Hearthstone like experience. You gain levels, you unlock cards, you can buy packs and things. Um, you can also craft cards and dust cards, which is mm. things that you can't do in Arena. Um, and again, this is one of those things that just feels like it just got dropped and Maybe it's awesome. It looks pretty good for uh, those who are playing it so far. Yeah. Um, I mean, I knew a little bit about it before it dropped, but I haven't seen it in action yet. So I have no no judgments on the gameplay. I'm not sure if it's like multiplayer or not. Um, it's 1v1. It, 1v1 sure. seems like an interesting concept. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this looks great. Um, it looks like a mobile app, which, yeah. you know, is a thing. But it seems like it's giving the magic people what they want and the people that are interested in mobile apps what they want which is Mm -hmm. a different kind of experience those two types of people but this appears to sort of marry those two concepts so the fact that i've heard nothing about it is the disappointment it's true and this is the artist formerly known as valor's reach so uh, i also definitely agree that spell slingers is a way better name um you know, so mm-hmm. sure, this is neat. You can find it right now on the iOS and the Google Play Store. Uh, check it out and let us know what you think. Yeah. Uh, moving on here real fast to Going Infinite. Oh, the questions that Rosewater gets to answer on the blog Um, They said, hey, you know, Wizards Magic's doing alternate universes, Warhammer and Lord of the Rings. What do you, you know, do you think we'll see a Star Wars set? And he said, would people like to see a Star Wars set? Question mark. Of course we would love to see a Star Wars set. Are you kidding me? Luke and Vader on cards would sell bro jillions. You think you saw numbers with Walking Dead? Oh, no, no, no. You are not going to see numbers like when you bust out some sick, like, lightsaber equipment and yada, yada, yada. Oh, sick. Can the swords be lightsabers with all the different yeah. colors? Sword and light. Oh, sword my of, God. I sword would of light that. and shadow. It would be is so the, sick. Yeah. Sword of light and shadow is the dark saber. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, so, Star Wars The Gathering yeah. does exist. Feel free to Google it. Yeah. Well, but, no, it's it's space, the convergence. Oh, I believe oh, space, the, what? Is that what they call Space the Convergence was the Magic the Gathering equivalent, is what they did. This was a long time oh, ago. Oh, this was what, like Wizards came up with. I'm talking like literally there is like Star Wars the Gathering from fans that did oh. this years ago. Interesting. Uh, um, that you can find uh, at StarWarsTheGathering.com. Like they did multiple sets, multiple releases, and all sorts of stuff. So here's here's my going infinite take. And we're going to and we're I'm going to expand and try to go as big picture as I can. The biggest picture I can go is when Dungeons and Dragons adapts IPs into its brand. Mm-hmm. A lot of the time it fails to capture the feeling because if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, you're playing a very specific type of role playing game. If I want to play Star Wars in Dungeons and Dragons, I shouldn't be playing the Dungeons and Dragons system. I should be playing a system adapted to dun- to Star Wars. I should play a game that was not, you know, invented in the 70s around high dark magic. I should be playing a a a game where the Star Wars m- world is the central idea so that things match up better. Mechanics is match that, up better. That's what they're doing now with like Lord of the Rings, right? A fifth edition exactly. Lord of the Rings. Now, Lord of the Rings matches, right? Because Lord of the Rings and Dungeons and Dragons are like the same thing. 
Yeah, yeah. It's high dark fantasy. There's elves, there's orcs, there's goblins, there's evil demons. Like, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. But Star Wars is different, right? Like, so there was a, uh, a couple years ago, people were like, so if you wanted to play Avatar The Last Airbender in, Star- in uh, Dungeons and Dragons, how would you do it? Well, you wouldn't. You would just go play the Avatar The Last Airbender role-playing game. I mean, you could. And, like, Dungeons and Dragons is the role-playing game that most people know how to play. And it's the common tongue of card games or of of role-playing games. Role-playing games, games, yeah. But it doesn't mean that it's the right format. So that's why I'm concerned with Star Wars. If Star Mm. Wars comes to Magic the Gathering and we are tapping mountains and there's plains. mountains in star wars plains? yeah there are mountains and forests and plains and swamps i uh, yes but <laughs> well, dagobah come on now we sure, got this great but we're like it's not a direct translation like we're we're trying our hardest uh you know and street fighter did a great job with this of translating magic into an ip that mm-hmm. d- didn't necessarily have that mm-hmm. um I'm just concerned because it's it's not the same. It's just not the same language, in my opinion. I'm not concerned. I feel like they don't need to be the same language. You just need a hint. So you need the flavor. Like, you just need, yeah. You know, the look, the feel. Like I yeah. said, if, if if they just reprint cards or whatever and just make it look like a lightsaber. I feel like we have 13,000 arts for every single thing. If we just want to reskin some iconic cards in whatever the flavor of that month is. I'm fine with it. It's kind of a fan service. And I think it there's a level, right? There is, they did a secret layer with Vader and Luke and whatever, or they did a whole set of Star Wars, a whole release, just like Lord of the Rings is going to be next year. Mm-hmm. You know, what's that going to look like, et cetera. Um, now, those are different levels. Magic, so D&D has its own space spa- place, which is Spelljammer. And Spelljammer is right. dope, but Spelljammer is D&D in space. Magic, now has space, right? We have Infinity. We right. have the traveling Astorium of Fun, which is great. But yeah, so I guess my concern is it, it's not a serious concern because obviously you've got the most popular trading card game. You've got the biggest IP. It's not going to fail. Mm-hmm. Um, it just could it be better? I think so. I mean, be better as in like, I don't know, it's, it's a better fit, quote unquote, for the worlds. But again, that's how magic's that's why magic, I think, is insane, because sure. you can adapt it to basically anything. Um, I mean, wasn't there a Star Wars trading card game? Oh, yeah. yes. That, and it didn't do well. So like that mm-hmm. translated 100 percent because it was designed and created for yeah. the show. So I feel like getting rid of the magic aspect and making it more relatable to Star Wars would probably actually just be a big flop. I yeah, don't know probably. if you can say that it did on it did poorly. I think it did like it's one of those it was one of those games that like blew up because people were super excited to try a new card game. CCGs were all brand new back then. I know I'm old as the rocks are soft, but like, you know, seriously, it was pretty big in its like little boom time. This is Star Trek was right alongside it. So like Star yeah. Trek, Star Wars and Magic were literally fighting neck and neck sure. at one point. And Magic just basically outlasted them. Star Wars, I think they like lost the license or something and it just died because it had to, not because no one was playing it. And yeah. it kind of went from there. Darth Vader used to be a $50 card in 1996. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it was. I mean, wow, Star Wars would money. be great to see to come to magic i i think um, that there are other ips i'd prefer but short short story time cgb mm-hmm. is the the reigning champ of the x files card game because he played at the championship at a convention and then that was the last time they played it it was just done so he wow. is the world champion of x files <laughs> so is that in his bio Hold on. i made him put it on his twitter bio at one point i don't know if he kept it oh my god i feel like he should have somebody he, out there he, he took it down but right. yeah it was there Somebody out there is the stone cold best at Sim City trading card game. I that is the factoid. I'm so glad I know that now because if I ever bring the newsing back and I ever do a joke about Covert Go Blue, it's the perfect I will thing. say reigning X Files card game world champion Covert Go Blue. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. I don't know how he doesn't milk that so much. Like that would just be like my personality at this point. Yeah, I. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. SimCity trading card game. Agreed. This is 
I, you know, there was one thing that I loved to do more than anything else when I was going to Gen Con, which is to find the old CCG booth. There was always one, sometimes two, but always at least one just jam packed full of crap that nobody cares about anymore. The Harry Potter trading card game, the SimCity game, like, you know, Deadlands or Deadwood, not Deadwood, but, you know, it was that um, the Western thing game. Yeah. So I was I opened packs on my stream and I'm like, if you spin the wheel, you get a pack. I open the pack on stream, give you the product, send it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I was looking at these booths and I've been thinking about it for some time, but I thought about buying a bunch of random stuff like that. X-Files, you know, Xeno Warrior Princess, just whatever random collectible card game packs I can get my hands on and then mm-hmm. shuffling them all together. And then you spin the wheel and you just get a random pack out of that. But like I haven't been able to like commit and purchase them all because they're you know a box is still kind of expensive on some of them. Mm. A very I have a very important note, which is not related to anything that we're talking about. Post Malone is currently playing for a hundred thousand dollars, or Kyle is playing for a hundred thousand dollars, I think. And I was told there's a lot of giveaways associated with it. So when you're done here, you yep. guys can go check that out. Jump over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um random last random bit about random trading card games. Um in 2004, I was working with another designer at Sony Online Entertainment to create a Stargate SG-1 trading card game that went through. I was basically a developer for all intents and purposes. They would hand me the design files and I would go print them out and like try to play the game and stuff. Um, and the game was terrible. So hmm. there, that's why you never heard about it. All right. So let's go ahead and turn the corner to the finisher. Super Nintendo's classic game, Super Punch-Out, has a two-player mode that went undiscovered for 28 years. And that's about how old Magic is. So tell me, what's a hidden play mode that has yet to be unlocked in Magic, Ruben? Well, MTG players will soon accidentally stumble into a brand new Commander format called Atrium, which will only be discovered thanks to the lack of command zone space available in Magic 30. (laughs) Nerd girl. All right. Well, with Walking Dead, Stranger Things, Warhammer, Lord of the Rings, and Star Wars, not to mention My Little Pony, we're on the precipice of Magic's new format, Corporate Extended. Wow. Wow. We have Popper, which is commons only, and we have Peasant, which is commons and uncommons. But now we have Bougie, which is a brand new format where mythics and rares can't be countered and black border duels can't be destroyed by Wasteland. I like the bougie format. And that I'm, I made an argument back in the day that black border duels shouldn't be able to be destroyed by Wasteland when I was a small child in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> they just look too cool. Yeah. And that ends another live episode of Magic Mike's. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Nerd Girl. Thanks for having me, guys. See you next week. Thank you, Ruben. Go, guy that's playing Post Malone. I hope Woo. you win a lot of money. Good luck. We'll move over to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffing.com, our co-sponsors, CardQuarter.com, and AlterSleeves.com. My co-hosts, MTG Nerd Girl and Ruben Bressler. Thank you guys for watching or listening. I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, Twitch.tv at Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, our Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Or join us here next week, same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.